Well, the ATGM rework has been here for a, a couple of months now, and boy, I bet this looks familiar to several of you. There are quite a few features, we'll say, with ATGMs that are not really well documented. And I'm going to try and go over some of those things that uh, I've learned the hard way, and I'm sure several of you guys have. Um, we'll kind of reference the, the patch notes, but then kind of go through a lot of a lot of things here that I've noticed that's not terribly well documented and, and these new behaviors uh, to watch out for. Uh, so let's just kind of dive right in. For any of these vehicles that have rapid fire features, things like the ZBL, uh, the ZBD, the BMP2M, the Bradley, one golden rule that you need to follow is do not have two rockets in flight at the same time. The first one will lose guidance, and, and on the wire-guided ones, they will especially go crazy as soon as they lose guidance. But even the beam riders will lose guidance and likely not hit their target. Do not have two in flight if you have a rapid-fire feature. Uh, you need to time it so that the other one's leaving the tube as the first one's hitting is what you want. And that timing is going to be different for the different vehicles. Um, we'll let you figure that, that part out. Emplaced wire-guided tows can be reloaded while the initial rocket is in flight. It's an odd distinction. Uh, well, while you certainly can't rapid-fire them, you can go ahead and begin the the reload while it's in flight if you're shooting at a stationary target go ahead and get that reload going uh, if you were looking to save some time on the next shot uh, it will allow you to do that funny enough with the bmp2m if you try to switch to the main gun while the rocket is in flight it will let you do it if you do it properly make sure that the missile is clear of the tube before you switch you should be able to shoot. Be aware it will continue to track where your crosshairs go, though. Now, if you switch before it's clear, you'll notice the, the missile just disappears. It doesn't even come out. You need to wait until after it's clear before you switch. But again, just keep in mind, as you raise your crosshairs to track a, a, the target to get range, you may throw the missile off. So it's probably best to do on things that are less than 500 away. Now we're going to try the same thing with the Bradley. Uh, we're going to get a tow in flight and then switch to the main gun while it's in flight. And immediately it snaps the wire as soon as you switch over to the other gun. Uh, it does not seem to want to let you do it. We'll try it here again, letting it get a little further before we switch. And again, we see the cable snap as soon as we switch to the main cannon. So you simply cannot do that in the Bradley. You need to let it get to the target before you switch. When it comes to correcting for guidance, the beam riders are less forgiving. The further away it gets, the less room for error you have, the less motion you can make with it. Uh, you've got to really be careful with how you move. If you're trying to, to direct it somewhere, you've got to keep it within that little circle as it gets further and further out. So tracking a moving target is going to be harder with uh, the beam riders for this reason. Uh, if we turn around and look at the uh, ATGMs, the wire guided ones, you'll see you have quite a bit more leeway. It's much more forgiving with wide swerves left and right up and down uh, and will continue on its trajectory. So this is definitely a win for the wire guided. Uh, if, if you need a little more leeway to move it around and track vehicles that are in motion or, or aerial targets, I think wire guide is going to be uh, the better option in general. When it comes to the canister smoke that vehicles can pop, those can disrupt a, disrupt the ATGMs, both the beam riding and the wire guided as well. Uh, you'll see here, beam riders are stopped uh, in their tracks by it. We switch over here to the uh, wire ATGMs. Uh, they are also uh, stopped by this. Now this only applies to canister smoke. Uh, so after this, we'll do an experiment and see if other forms of smoke uh, do disrupt these because it claims if you lose line of sight but in the patch note it says only canister vehicle canister smoke will will do this so here we're going to go ahead and try some other forms of smoke and see if that disrupts them and after doing this with a few different types of smoke uh, i can confirm that uh, other smokes do not stop these uh, atgms only the canister smoke from vehicles seem to stop it
with the changes to ATGMs, not only do you have to worry about the range because the arming range is much closer, you also have to worry about where you aim because of the trajectory that they have coming out uh, of the tube. Uh, when they're pretty close, like right at 100 meters, you're going to have to aim very low, like you see here, to uh, actually get it to hit the target where you're expecting. Uh, if you step it out a bit to 150 meters, you'll want to aim basically where the tracks or the wheels meet the ground and it should get it on target. And then finally, when you get out to about 200 meters, you should be able to aim pretty much, it's gonna go where you're aiming. Uh, that holds true for both the wire guided as well as the beam riders. Lastly, we come to the trash heap that is the BMP-1. Uh, it's used the Malietka. If you're using it at a uh, target that's about 100 meters away, you need to aim as far down as possible to have a chance to hit it. If you don't, you will miss it. Uh, if it's out at about uh, 150 meters, you need to aim fairly low, kind of like you did uh, on the 100 meter shot on the other ones. You need to aim a bit low to make the 150 meter shots hit. And once again, once you get out to a little past 200, uh, things should shoot normally. One thing I've seen a lot of back and forth on is whether or not leaves and branches can break the tow cable. Uh, so here we go, shooting straight through a whole bunch of leaves and branches here. Uh, and as you'll see, does not appear that it uh, affects it at all. So you, as long as uh, it's not something that's blocking bullets or whatnot, it should go straight through it. In the patch notes, they said they wanted beam riders to be a little more accurate. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of a wire guided in flight compared to a beam rider. You can look at it, it's really kind of an opinion. I can see arguments both ways. Uh, there's times where the wire guided seems a little more stable actually, but the beam rider does seem to be fairly more predictable. It's holding a kind of a tight spiral there. Uh, it's, it's really kind of your opinion, which one is more accurate here. And when all is said and done, you want to go out there, fire off a shot like this, and witness the frustration of the new way ATGMs are handled because the precision is just not quite there like it used to be. Um, you're going to keep something dead in your crosshairs and somehow it's going to find a way to sneak over the top of your target, uh, especially at range. Uh, you know, there's, there's just a little bit of randomness to some of this. It happens to us all. I, I'm not sure there's terribly much you can do about it except try to keep it as centered as possible on the fattest part of your target if you want. So here's the TLDR on all of this. Uh, when you're shooting these ATGMs at about 100 meters, you need to aim pretty low, significantly low if, it, if they're at 100 meters to be sure you hit the target. At 150 meters, you wanna aim where their tires or their tracks meet the ground. And then once you're out at about 200 meters plus, uh, aim normally. With the exception of the Malietka, the Malietka, you want to aim literally bottom the scope, bottom your uh, sights out down to the ground if you're shooting at something that's 100 meters away. Uh, that's the only way you'll hit it. Uh, and at about 150 meters on the Malietka, you need to still aim low, kind of like you did with the 100 meter shot on the other one. Uh, leaves and branches, small trees do not break wires, uh, nor do they break uh, beam guidance from what we can tell. If basically if it doesn't stop bullets, it doesn't break the guidance. Um, vehicle canisters, when you pop smoke through vehicle canisters, that does disrupt both uh, wire guided and beam guided. Uh, other smoke sources do not disrupt guidance. Uh, so no matter how you produce the smoke, doesn't doesn't break the guidance unless it comes from a vehicle canister pop. And including engine smoke. Engine smoke does not work. Um, and when you're using the rapid fire features of, say, the Bradley and the uh, BMP-2M, when you start getting out past 600 meters, you need to slow it down. You don't want to get the other one out of the tube while the first one is in flight because it will disrupt the flight of the first one. Slow it down when you start getting out past 600 meters or, or around 700 meters. But then when you start getting out to 1,000, you really need to slow it down and, and be sure you don't disrupt the flight of the first one.
And if I do a quick comparison of the pros and cons between beam guided and wire guided, I would say uh, beam's got a good advantage that you can switch and use your guns while it's in flight, which you cannot do with the wire guided. Um, if you lose guidance on the beam, you can reacquire it and continue guiding it, or it will continue straight on its path that it was going on if it loses guidance as well. Uh, wire guided, as soon as it loses that guidance, uh, it goes wild. If that cable is snapped, it's, it's done for. Uh, you can fire on the move with a beam guided, although it's tough to do. It is possible. Moving won't disrupt anything. You must remain perfectly still, though, with a wire guided. And even the slightest drift while you're out in the water, uh, that can also cause the wire to break. And when we've got to track targets, especially distant moving targets, uh, I'm going to give a slight edge there to the wire guided uh, because it's a little more forgiving on moving it around. Whereas with the beam rider, it can be a little easier, especially at long distances, to lose that guidance if you get out of the little circle. Uh, so I'll give a slight win there to the uh, wire guided. It's just a regular striker. So there you go. That's my steaming hot take on ATGMs and their current state after the recent changes. Uh, kind of like some of the changes. It's I, I get why they're doing it, but boy, some of it is frustrating for sure. It's just a matter of adapting to it. It does require, you could say, a little more skill or a little more knowledge on how to use them in certain situations, especially when the target's a bit closer. Uh, you got to know how to control your aim there. So anyway, hopefully uh, y'all found something in here that you didn't know already and put it to use. Uh, anyway, good luck, and I'll see you guys out there on the field. Oh, Talk to you later. He's way out there. Yep, eyes on. He's tracked. You move your rap. Send him, send him, send him, send him, send him, send him all. Three nice hit, shot. two hits. He's dead. He's dead. Enemy tank destroyed. Good job. Nice. Ooh. It only took two. I, I wasted the third one. <laughs> That's fine. I will happily waste a third one on that. Good kill.